What's up, fam? It's Calla from Recalibrate, back with episode 23 of the Lighten Up podcast. On today's episode, I have my friends Shelby and Rich from Let's Not and Say We Did, an adventure wedding elopement company that they built together. And if you're listening to this on the day it drops, happy Valentine's Day. (laughs) I had to be a little bit cliche and release this episode about love on this corporate holiday of love. (laughs) But I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. I think that everyone, no, I know that everyone is going to get something out of this episode. It was honestly probably my favorite episode that I've recorded so far. I was like lit up (laughs) during this recording. And I think that you guys listening are going to be lit up also listening to this. We talk about all sorts of stuff. We talk about Shelby and Rich and their career development and how they ended up in this company together. We talk about how they met and their relationship. We talk about their love and how they keep their love strong. We talk about a little bit about my love life (laughs) and um, just like trusting spirit and trusting the path and taking it one step at a time and just so much. I resonated so much with this episode. I cried at one point and It's just a really beautiful episode, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Thank you to Shelby and Rich for sitting down with me and being so open, vulnerable, honest, and just sharing their story. I feel so inspired watching their journey and hearing about it. And like I said, I think you guys listening will too. So thank you so much. If you haven't checked them out on Instagram, please do that. It's at Let's Not Weddings. I'll put it down in the in the photo or comments below, I was thinking I also, they also have another page called Let's Not Photography, K-N-O-T, you know, like not get it. Um, but anyway, I'll put that information down there and I would highly recommend go checking out their, going and checking out their page. They have so much awesome content and beautiful photos and it's just really inspiring. So With that all being said, thank you for taking the time to listen, and let's grab a candle, some sage, palo santo, sacred smoke, whatever you've got laying around, and let's lighten up together. It's Calla from Recalibrate, back with another, another episode. I can't fucking talk. <laughs> I think you should just keep it. Okay, all right. Back with another episode <laughs> with my friends, Shelby and Rich, <laughs> from Let's Not and Say We Did. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be talking about love and stuff today. Love and stuff. Love and stuff. <laughs> but before we get into it, you know the drill. We'll get centered into our bodies and be present in this moment. And my favorite way to do that is with the breath. So whatever you're doing, I just invite you to start paying attention to your breath as we prepare to take three of the deepest breaths that we've taken all day together. And on the exhale, I invite you to join me in letting it out with a sound like a ha, because this communicates to your nervous system that you are safe and calm. So Let's uh, let's get into it. So everybody, breathe in and let it out. <sighs> Again, breathe in. <sighs> Last one. Breathe in. Sip in a little more and let it out. <sighs> invite you to grab your candle if you have one as we say a prayer and just call upon our highest selves the love energy that flows through all of us the creation energy and ask that our highest selves be present with this conversation so that we can let the truth of our hearts flow through and be communicated so that all of us may find more love and peace and connection and joy and laughter and sovereignty, all of the beautiful things in life. I ask that that energy just flow through us and flow through the phone and through the airwaves and just connect us all in a web of love and light. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
<laughs> Sodom. Sodom. <laughs> yes, that too. Oh, we're drinking some cacao. Thank you, Shelby. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's a perfect, um, a perfect accompaniment to our, our, uh, our episode here. So I was wondering <laughs> if you guys could introduce yourselves, Shelby and Rich, of, you know, let's not and say we did. Yeah. You why don't you kick us off? All right. Um, <laughs> my name is Shelby, and this is my husband Rich, and we have an adventure elopement company called Let's Not and Say We Did. Um, we specialize in very small, intimate weddings, um, and with an emphasis on ceremony and redeeming ceremony in general, um, redeeming what marriage. For the longest time, marriage has meant like all of these like property, really um, misogynistic views and. It's, it's, we empower people to step into a marriage of equals mm -hmm. and Rich facilitates that ceremony and then I capture all of the moments mm -hmm. so that people can stay in them. <laughs> Dude, yeah. And there, you guys really are like, your photos are, oh, I haven't been to a ceremony, so, but I can imagine that your ceremonies are beautiful too. How did you guys like, that was a, just a, the most Beautiful. I'm like, you just set the stage of everything we're going to talk about like, <laughs> with your elevator speech or whatever. But how did you guys get started in this or like? Um, well, we eloped. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you looked at me and I was like mid sip. I'm like, I can't say anything. Um, <laughs> we eloped in Canada. Whenever I was little, I imagined my wedding to be literally me and my person in the mountains that's mm. all that I wanted that's all that I like literally envisioned so that's kind of what happened we bought a, a package and we had both really transitioned from different chapters in our lives in the midwest and then we moved out here to Arizona and Rich was kind of focusing on like what do I actually want to do I've we've both I was. I don't know that I was consciously focusing on it. I think I was mm -hmm. grasping at something more, and I didn't really know what the more was. It was like I'm working a corporate job. We moved out here, and then I think I had like seven jobs before I. Mm -hmm. do, and it's only been mm -hmm. like two two and a half years. I had like seven jobs because I was like, I'm gonna try this. Maybe I'll be happy here. I'm gonna try that. Maybe I'll be happy there. And every time was like. It was all for the money and it was all for like, I got to get out of this like corporate space. Mm -hmm. And Shelby had never really been in a corporate space. No, I've never and had a, like a, all of my jobs <laughs> are She's never had like a nine to five. And like, I feel like I've always been in sales mm -hmm. and like, I feel like I was this whole idea of like being awakened, whatever that means to anybody listening. <laughs> like, I feel like I started to become more conscious during this like two year span of being in the desert, which has been a massive place of transformation well, for the, both of us. It was the first time we tried psychedelics too. Yeah. Like within that whole time frame. So there was, was a lot like, of transformation oh, going on. The <laughs> the window started to become more open as far as like, oh, like this cage is all in my mind and I can actually go outside it. Yeah. And when we were in Canada getting married, this this officiant, um, his name was Aiden, and he <laughs> came with the package we selected one of the ones that we wanted. We picked him out because his eyes were very joyful. So <laughs> well, no, Shelby, Shelby picked him out. I was like, cool, I, like, that's fine. Like, I, I didn't really think anything of it. Um, <laughs> cool, joyful eyes. We'll, we'll take this guy. And, and he came out. He had, like, a script that you could tell was, like, the government. I guess the government in Canada, like, tells you what to say because we still have the booklet of what he said. Mm -hmm. Uh, where he just wrote, he just like scribbled their names in, but he was so happy and joyful. And I was like, I'm, I'm a ordained minister. Like I was in the army as a chaplain. Oh, and I had done a twist. <laughs> different chapters, <laughs> different, yeah, different chapter, different lifetime. But I, I had facilitated, I think two wedding ceremonies and it, I, I don't know, just the, how joyful he was. I was like, Oh wait, it, it was like he was giving me permission, like, yo, you can do really whatever you want. Like, I never, and we've talked about this, I've never felt, Shelby has all of these talents, like, tangible talents where you, she can sit down and play any song on the piano, 
she can sing, she can, she's an artist, she creates things. And I was like, I don't, what is my gift? I don't have a gift. Dude, I feel that. I just, I was like, I just don't. Yes. Yeah. Because it's my, your voice. My gift is my voice and my ability to create a container. And nobody was ever like <laughs> said, hey, like that's a gift. Yeah. Ah! Yes. Oh, yes, oh by the is. way, it's a gift that like you can serve others and like create your own life based on that. And so Ooh. I saw like this window of like possibility and I was like, oh, I could, I was like, show I, I think like, I even yes, said it on the that. wedding day. I remember that moment. And I was like, yes. Like, I, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I know that you are meant to do something incredible. And we just had to figure out what it was. <laughs> well, it, like, figured us out. It was like. Yeah, mm. totally. It definitely did. <laughs> so, because, uh, I mean, we never saw ourselves working in any type of wedding industry. Like, mm -hmm. Shelby's only been a photographer for, like, what, a year and a half? Yeah, it was during COVID that I picked up a camera. Like an actual camera. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like I fire. Thank you. And it's I been cool to like watch her like seek her teeth into like when shall we find something she loves? It's like the blinders go it's on. Like and she's focus. like, How do I figure this thing out? Like and it's been cool it's been cool to witness. Um as far as like how it like, so that was like the origin. I mean, that's a great that, story. That's like, the, I, I love that story. That's the origin <laughs> story of Let's Not. Um, is this getting getting married in Canada on Lake Louise? And Damn. we we came back, and it wasn't until later that year that it actually started to become like something I wanted to kind of test because I don't think I did my first wedding until the. The business wasn't even created till October of like 2019. Yeah, well, you were, he was officiating. And we got married in June. You were officiating weddings in, like, you were officiating weddings still. It was just under Rich Sutton. And so yeah, we didn't have trying, like a business or anything. I was trying it out. And I remember uh, the first wedding I did, the first ceremony I did was in a living room. It was in, uh, it was not what I had pictured like this, like, yeah. like, this isn't what, how I imagined it going. And the first time I get booked to, do a ceremony is in somebody's living room in Buckeye and half the, half the people there didn't speak English. So they didn't have any idea what I was saying. And after the ceremony, the, one of their kids comes downstairs. They forgot to tell him that they were like doing the wedding in the living room. And he's like, you guys did all this without me. And I'm like, this is my first ceremony. I'm like, does this happen a lot? Like what's going on? Like, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but after the first meeting of, the one thing he, the one thing I love Aiden, um, if you ever listen to this, Aiden, I love you. Uh, <laughs> the one thing he, the one thing he didn't do is, um, he didn't know us. He, he didn't know how we met. He didn't know where, really where we were from or really any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just his joy that was like very attractive. Like, yeah. I, I want you to lead us in ceremony. So I said, I could, I want to do it differently. I want to know the people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm just going to take people out for coffee or drinks or like whatever they prefer and. Let's, let's get to know and ask them certain questions and mm -hmm. build it around them versus like having to do it like the same way for every person. So right. uh, that meeting with Chad and Christine, I still remember their names. I came mm -hmm. home, I was there in shorts and a t-shirt and a hat, very similar to what I have on now. And I came in and I'm like, Shelby, I got to be myself. <laughs> and I got to ask these people about their relationship and find out how they fell in love. I was yeah. like, this is incredible. Like I, I can like th there's something here, and yeah. then that's okay. I need to turn it into a business name. Let's let's like, and uh, shout out to Durban Poison for the the help. On, ah! um, <laughs> I kid you not. I was like, Shelby, I gotta go. I gotta go write down a bunch of. I'm gonna go figure out what our name's gonna be. Yeah. So I got to the pool at our old at our old house, and I'm sitting down, and I had just smoked some Durban Poison, mm -hmm. and I had a legal pad, and I'm writing like like uh, two people, one beard. Like, <laughs> just, yeah, but you gotta get out whatever. I was head. just like, well, I was just riffing, like, and then I wrote down, let's not and say we did. And it, like, my soul was like, fuck yes. Dude, like, I have this is it. <laughs> I've had goosebumps like 20 times. <laughs> I, that's how it was when Recalibrate came to me. I was like, you know it. it. Yeah. You, you feel it in your yeah. body. Yeah. And, um, oh, I, love that. I run inside and <laughs> I'm like, show me. I figured it out. I'm like, nobody has this name. Like, it's available. Like, we can do this. 
I had no clue what he was even talking about. Because at this point, it was just him officiating. I was not even involved in the business at all. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what? (laughs) And then he was like dancing over here, high as fuck. And I was like, I have the name. I'm like, okay, cool. But yeah, it was awesome. I was was at the bank. I was working for Chase at the time that this all happened. And um, I was like, I'm making really good money at Chase. Like, I have no idea, like, how how is this possible that this can even become something that I could have a life on? Right. Or we could start a family, we could have a house. Like, how, how is that even possible? So, um, it I have these questions and I feel like the universe just answers them when it's, when it's like, appropriate. Or when it feels like, like I can handle the answer. Yes! <laughs> um, and I just, I've come to just accept that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there are more questions that, that don't have answers, but the ones that you're do, like, I just gotta relax in this because it will be revealed. Yeah. yeah, I just couldn't handle it or would reject it or not understand it. Wouldn't make sense, I wouldn't, sense. wouldn't be able to receive it. Yeah, and so fast forward six months, COVID hits, and the world is kind of in this like shift of what do we do? Was this a real thing? Like, what's happening? Um, are we supposed to shut down? Are we not? Like, everybody remembers, right? Yeah. Like, you're like, what do we do? Um, and with weddings, I was doing weddings that had you know, 200 people. So I'm doing these massive ceremonies. And very quickly, like overnight, cancellations everywhere. But one thing they have to have is an officiant. So they have to have somebody to, to legally be able to do uh, the ceremony and the paperwork and all that. So the weddings became smaller and more unique. And I started to pique my interest more and I realized, hey, there's no mute. Some of these ceremonies don't have music. And music is like this big amplifier of experience and there's no music. Or they have a Bluetooth speaker and nobody knows how to run it. And it's just <laughs> choppy. Or like it cuts out in the middle of like her walking down the aisle. And I was like, oh, that's that could be different. It could be different. At the end of the day, you could look at it and be like, that's exactly the way it was supposed to go. It's not meant to be this elaborate thing. But also on the same side of it, it's like you're entering into you're entering into a ceremony. Yeah. And it's important if you've ever been in any type of ceremony that it's very protected and it's very it's curated. Like you want the space to feel safe. And if the music's choppy and the bride's walking down the aisle and she's like, "Wait, what is happening? Like why is it so loud?" It takes you out of it the It takes present. you out of the yeah. present of like I got So anyways, I notice this, I come home and I say, "Shelby." <laughs> 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 I I said, yo, here's a problem. You can solve it. And I, I I said, you have a beautiful voice. Like you're so joyful, and you can play anything. And so so we started to add like so we started to do it together. She started coming with me to weddings, and people would have her play guitar and sing to them while she the way they come down the aisle. And that started to become more of a repetitive thing. So we were doing all these weddings together, which was super fun. Uh, it was still like, where is this going? Like, is this is this going to be bigger than we think it is? And uh, we were doing a wedding in Sedona. And we were working with a lot of really close people that we had done weddings with before. And I'm like, I had this moment where it's like time just kind of stood still. And I just like was, I was on Cathedral Rock. And I'm like looking around. And I'm seeing the bride and the groom and their family. And they're so, I'm just seeing all of this as if time is standing still. And I was like, oh, and like a new idea dropped in. It was like, you can create this every time if you want. And I was like, every time I can control the people who are in the space. I can work with people I love. I can work with people who love other people and they do an amazing job at whatever it is they do, whether it's hair or makeup or creating floral or singing, like, Whatever they're doing, they do it. They're using their gift. I can do that. And so we started talking, what if we started offering packages where we're in charge of making the space? And literally two weeks later, we get a we get an inquiry. Somebody wants to, they gave us seven days notice <laughs> to book an all-inclusive wedding on the day before Thanksgiving last November. And that was the very first package that... That was the very first wedding that I ever shot. I, I was... <laughs> I was more so wanting to get a camera to, I love children and I wanted to be a family photographer or capture the kids in authentic moments. Um, Because 
there's just little moments that you don't really get to capture if somebody else isn't capturing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where my brain was when I bought the camera. And then this happened and I was like, well, I've been playing around with the camera for six months. Why don't, why don't I just do this wedding? And I loved it. Like oh. one, the people list. <laughs> different, the difference between children and adults who want their photos taken is the adults are going to listen to you <laughs> and they want to be photographed and they want like they it was so fun so peaceful so joyful and then i was like oh my gosh i get to create art for these people and full disclosure um because i drew a, a card about honesty and truth <laughs> <laughs> that that wedding stepping into that was i think it was more of a moment than we realized yeah because it was a moment where we were like oh shit do we really know what we're doing like are we can we deliver like mm -hmm. this is our first time and, and the answer was fuck yeah we can <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was i just remember shall we like how do i what do I do? How do I yeah. pose? Like, how do I pose adults? Like, it's, how do I tell them what to do? It's like prompting because I, I want yeah. my. That own. is important. Yeah. I don't like when I'm with a photographer yeah. and they don't tell me like, "Girl, your arm looks stupid as fuck that way." Like, right. yeah. like try go. They don't say it like that, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean. If you're like go like this, then I'm like, oh yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. it's also about like hyping the person up while still telling them what to do yeah. in a like joyful way. Yeah. And so it is definitely a dance of prompting and then also capturing who like, they yes, actually girl, are yeah. that's so beautiful like yes yeah, yeah. now try it going like this like, yeah you know just because yeah. then you feel comfortable and that mm -hmm. light shines through on them yeah dude yeah you're probably great at that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. i think she i think you've honestly really like stepped more into being more vocal mm -hmm. recently yeah um and it's cool to watch because you i'm not i'm not with the cameras if i am with the cameras with my iphone like doing like behind the scenes stuff okay but hearing you say stuff to the couple like um like you're being more vocal about it like mm -hmm. oh my god you guys are so beautiful or like look at all that love coming out of it. like oh. just like really speaking like this like identity about yeah it's it's really cool to watch and the photos you get out of it like their eyes i don't know just their eyes are really lit up about hearing that yeah mm -hmm. Well, and to come back to identity, it's like Rich gets to tell people who they are within the aspect of ceremony, and he gets to call out identity in people, and then I get to show them, like, hey, mm. this is who you are, and it's beautiful, and it's very much like I'm capturing the light in your eyes, and like all of these fun things that people don't necessarily see themselves as, but I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are a work of art. Dude, so. you're going to make me cry. This is like the most beautiful podcast I've ever recorded. I'm like, I'm sitting here just like, keep talking. Like, tell me more about your story. Like, it's just so inspiring to hear and see and like, just witness like how you guys have trusted and it's just like, enfolded onto this like, beautiful thing. Like, you can see it even on Instagram. Like, what you guys are doing is powerful and beautiful and awesome and like, mm -hmm. To just hear hear your story is really inspiring. Like I'm like I could I'm gonna run like a marathon right now. Like this is so exciting. So, but I'm curious. Like it made me think too. Like what's your guys' story in terms of how you met? Unless I cut you off in the if you have more to say oh, about. No, you know, I mean doing. our story is fairly. Uh, I guess it could be fairly short. Um, <laughs> so we met. We actually met on Tinder. I had a mental oh. breakdown. <laughs> 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 I was. Uh, I was really screaming at the universe like why the fuck are you not bringing me somebody to partner with through life because i want a partner and this is ridiculous and i'm doing all the right things which is like you know my yeah. little mentality of ego and i, I was she like, got no. on tinder and started swiping around everybody no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i got on tinder i did get on tinder that day i got i was on tinder for 24 hours mm. i matched with you 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 messaged me and i was like okay i'm done <laughs> <laughs> like like this is my person and i How do you know i saw okay so i'm very visionary i have um lots of pictures in my head i saw his soul as a vibration of light this is so this is so weird <laughs> no we're here for it. <laughs> <laughs> so i i tapped into him i don't know how else to say it yeah 
and I saw this beautiful like this it was like a drum beat like you know how like drums beat on the water and it makes the water like boop 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 that was his soul it was like dancing in this like turquoise light yellow green it was like this beautiful rainbow of like hip-hop light <laughs> and <laughs> and at the time at the time I don't think he saw himself as that yeah. no, but definitely not. I definitely was like no like I just felt it in all that I am when was this like what year 2017 yeah 2017 okay mm -hmm. and you met and you were on the east coast we, we were in the midwest oh, in midwest. Missouri we met mm -hmm. okay yeah um I was, I think this is also important. I was actually married before. Okay. And what's cool is like our relate, like I feel like we've redeemed, I together we've redeemed this idea of what love is and like how you can actually love. I, I have these moments where I'm like, I love Shelby more than I ever, like I don't understand the type of love that you have for somebody, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel like that's a, it's a mutual feeling. Like I, I, <laughs> yes. I, I feel, com I feel confident in saying that. <laughs> Um, but fuck, I'm high. I don't Dude, know I'm that. crying, so <laughs> that's fine. And but like, that's I love that because that's yeah. And to keep with that, it's oh, I, I know where I'm going. Okay. I, I know where the train was going. The train was going to say that um, there's a lot of couples that we get the joy of like celebrating their special day with who are on their second marriage, and it's like that is their person, like. I, I, I don't know what it is about second marriages, but a lot of people, I, we, we grew up in a very religious, conservative divorce is like, you're automatically going to hell. Like mm -hmm. it, it had this really twisted view and it was like, no, I've come to learn so much about myself and who I was and have appreciation for that phase so that this, like, so that this could blossom into what it is. And it's like people who are listening to this or watching this who have been divorced, like, love is not ruined it's not over it doesn't exist and it like it still exists um and it can exist it's cool to see it happen because we get to hear how people reconnected they'll meet some, they'll meet earlier in life and then 20 years later they get connected through like fucking linkedin or something Dude. on a job promotion and they start going to lunch and they start to realize <laughs> oh my god i loved you when i first saw you 20 years ago and now they're starting a family and, and buying a home to get like it's so crazy to see how love just like Besides, we're gonna we're gonna take you this way, but we're gonna bring you back here. And just like the beauty of like, I love that you've been because you've never were you married? No. Before? Yeah, me either. And my partner, <clears throat> person, whatever you want to call it, like he was married previously, and like I knew I was like, because I'm 33 now, so I knew I was like, I'm gonna get me one of these motherfucking divorces. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm gonna get some because I felt I had the story my whole life that I was like always preparing men for marriage because they would date me, we'd like go through the shit and then they'd meet their wife. And I was like, I'm fucking done with that story. Yeah. I was like you, I was mm -hmm. like, why the fuck? Like mm -hmm. I'm awesome. Like, why do I not have someone to do life with? Like, like this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a flip side to that though. The flip side from my perspective is I was scared nobody would want to be with me yeah. because I was divorced. Right. But it's awesome because like. It's like this switch of like, oh, I'm going to have to be with this person. But that same, the, the mentality is flipped from the person who is the divorcee yeah. of like, am I going to find somebody to love me or am I going to fall in love again? Like yeah. that is, that was a very like much repetitive thought. Yeah, and I, that's like the beauty of it because yeah. like, and he said the same thing about me. He's like, what I thought was love before like you've like blown the lid off like now I can feel like what this like even deeper love is but we both have gratitude like I have so much gratitude for his ex-wife I'm like thank you for like preparing this man for me <laughs> like shit dude <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want it. <laughs> but I, I had the same intuitive hit where I I was I specifically was praying for him like two years before we met and I felt that he was already married and I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm like, I already knew it was coming. Like I already yeah. knew it was happening and I actually knew it when I reached out. Like I was like, Oh, cause I could feel it. Like I intuitively am very tapped into all of the things. And yeah. so like, I already knew before we even talked. So <laughs> he wasn't, it wasn't like a surprise to me, yeah. but yeah. I also think soulmates tend to like stay with you and grow with you. 
while other people sometimes are like, okay, well, you've learned your lesson, now you get to evolve. And then when it comes to like actual soulmates of or people who are willing to live life with you, it's okay, I'm going to trigger you and we're going to get through it. And I'm going to, and it's going to be a healing process of like, hey, let's, let's call each other out on your bullshit so that we can become better people. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. <laughs> so it hasn't been easy, but it has been great. <laughs> yeah. It's been a lot of growth. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love to see it. Like I told you guys before we recorded, like, you know, you don't see a lot of people that are like happy in relationship. Like, and so it's beautiful to witness you guys. I mean, I know you've only been together. Was it like five years? Five years. 28,000 years. 28,000 years. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. In this <laughs> lifetime. Like we, five years. Yeah. 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 We've been together like five. But that's still a long time and it's beautiful because like I can feel your love and like I can see it on the internet <laughs> and like I can, you guys are real people. Like that's why I was like, I can't wait to do this podcast. But, because it's inspiring and like, you know, I want to believe in love. Like, cause I feel I'm in this love portal and it's like the greatest thing I've ever felt in my life. I'm like, I want to stay here forever. So yeah. like, how do you guys keep the love alive and like, what you know i don't know like what do you have to say about relationships <laughs> I, think, I think that i think shelby kind of hit on it is finding the person who's willing to say like essentially we're dancing together like yeah. we're going to dance through life sometimes i feel like i'm leading sometimes i feel like she's leading sometimes i want to lead and she <laughs> wants to lead like the dance is like the best metaphor for a relationship and it's like if I step on your toes, do you still want to dance with me? Do you step on my toes while I still dance with you? Yeah. Like, can can we figure out? How, and when we sway, it's beautiful. <laughs> but when we step on each other's toes, like we sometimes we have to learn some new dance moves. <laughs> yeah, you're like, all right, let's you know what I mean? up the dance. Like, like, oh, um, I think this is. I'm just gonna be vulnerable and transparent. I think that this is appropriate to share that, like. We just learned about our human design um, type. And I'm a projector and she's a generator. Mm. That was like a giant ass permission slip of- To be your fucking hey, self. <laughs> be yourself. There's nothing wrong. Like stop trying to fix what you naturally are doing. Um, I don't know, I never felt like seen by uh, any kind of personality test. And I felt seen. I feel that, same with me, human design. Yeah. It opened up so much to me, I was like, oh, <laughs> I can be that. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, I am that. I am that. Why mm -hmm. am I trying to do something different? Exactly. Like, I, I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. Like I am this person and it's a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And one example is like Shelby gets in a very, she gets in a flow state. So like not only are we doing this dance together in our on a personal level, like we're also doing it together on a business level. Right. Which adds like a lot more. <laughs> it, it's a different dimension. It's a different layer of like workflow. And, and for me, like, I, as a projector, have like spurts of energy. Yeah. And I was like, well, that makes way more sense. I try to go hard all day long. And I, it's not the best. It's like, take more naps, like do less. And I'm like, nobody's ever told me to do less in my life. Like what? <laughs> yeah. And then I find out that Shelby, she, she's a generator. So she has all of this energy. And when she starts something, like she has to finish it. Yeah. Whether that's committing to a couple, whether that's committing to a project. So I would come home. And she's up there in a workflow. And I'm like, I would get kind of like, why don't you come down and say hi? Like, you get home. very upset that I didn't come downstairs and hug him as soon as he walked in the door. I'm like, I, I would love a hug from you. And she's like, this is pre human design. It, <laughs> ca it caused like this argument of like, no, I do love you, but I'm in the middle of something. And I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> and then, then we do the human like, design. And I'm like, oh, that makes way more sense. Like, yeah. it's nothing personal. It's you're in a flow, like that's your you're you're in your work mode. And what I'm doing is I'm causing a disturbance when I come up and I'm like, hey. And I'm like, it just made me like approach it in love versus approaching it in like, oh, she's out to get me. Like like the ego wants to say like that's a personal attack towards me. Right. And it's like, no, no, like she's being herself. And she's and gonna nothing. be able to show up for you better exactly later. And so she's not gonna be thinking about what she didn't finish. Right. <laughs> because it's already done. So that's just like one small example of you, you have that and some people that would sever a relation that that root would continue to go down and it never would get dealt with uh -huh. resentment. Like that's one thing that we agreed on like very early in our relationship. 
always be always be honest this is a this is a safe place to be honest and what was the second part i was just talking about <laughs> god dang it oh. um thanks mead not letting things fester resentment resentment not allowing resentment to build yeah. so you know some sometimes this if you've ever got upset with your person at something small it's probably not that and it seems like you turn it into this massive thing you can trace that back to something that was undealt with yeah so how how can we it's a practice it's a discipline of like hey this is uncomfortable but like this really hurt me yeah and like can you can you have that conversation with your person and if you can't if you can't say like i'm hurt by this and like or calling you out on your bullshit as shelby just <laughs> called it like hey i noticed this pattern I don't, I'm not telling you what to do, but like, as you're near, like, I don't feel like that's healthy. And like, here's how it's playing out in ways that bringing the unconscious to conscious. Right. And it's, a, it's beautiful. But sometimes it's, it's really fucking hard. Yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah, I right? think also there's been such a redeeming aspect to where I get to feel in the fullest and I get to be seen as I'm feeling. Mm. And there's a permission to like, have a fit there's a permission to scream there's a permission to yell there's a permission to cry oh and i remember i was i remember i was i was mad i was really mad at something and you were standing there and you were just looking at me and i was like uh i didn't understand why she was staring at me and then we went for a walk which walks are great like <laughs> walks are very underrated uh <laughs> they're great for like processing stuff they're great for like Conversing. walking and talking things out or talking ideas out Walks are amazing. I love that. Pro tip. Take a Pro walk. Pro tip. Take a walk. Take more walks with your person. Yeah. Um, shit, the weed got me off track. No, it's good. I, I was seeing you. I was witnessing your Oh, anger. I said, I said what, why, why were you just standing there looking at me? And she's like, I wanted to see what your anger looked like. Mm. And I was like, well, next time, just tell me. Say, <laughs> I want to be a witness. I'm not standing here just like staring at you. <laughs> like, it's cool to be, be able to like offer that to each other. Like. I want to see you're angry. Because like, you're most, angry, like let's yell together. Yeah. And most yell? people shame you for for being angry, or most people, I don't know, shame. Or like you for go all de go deal with that over there. Like I don't want to see it. Yeah. yeah. Go yeah. to your room. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I remember my dad saying, like I don't even want to look at you right now. <laughs> like hearing that, like that yeah. type of tone, but being able to go, like yeah, I want to watch you throw a fit. Yeah. I want to, I want to see it. Right. Or I want to I want to join in with you. Can I yell with you? And, and then it turns into it something turns into that like, like is silly <laughs> and then you then it's it's dealt with. And Are you talking like, about like when you're mad about something else or when you're mad at each other or both? Most of the time I think we're mad at something else. <laughs> That's what I I felt when you asked that question my body was like something else. Yeah. yeah. If we're mad at each other um I don't know that we get mad at each other often. It's usually something it's usually has happened trigger. and it's a causing our, our behavior or the way that we talk to each other. And so it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Like you seem like yeah. you're talking to, you're talking to me in the wrong tone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but you can feel it and the energy can be felt. And it is like, you can, it's just like, almost like what I found for me when I have these moments, like, cause even already, like with it being long distance, like we've had to like talk about, things you know but it's not like it's like you're just being witnessed and i'm being witnessed in my feelings and communicating to him what i'm feeling so that then he's just like in on it mm -hmm. and he can like witness me like for example like he's back in denver and like i've been here dealing with a lot of my shit and like feeling like fomo like fucking mm -hmm. hard like and i've had to like sit with that and like but and it's like you don't want to tell him like i'm like really like feeling left out of like you hanging out with like your sister all the time and, like i'm not there like because it's stupid as fuck <laughs> but like i'm still feeling it and to just like be able to go to him and like explain that and then he just like holds space for it and allows it to be and like doesn't do anything like there's no trauma bonding of like then him saying like no like like feeding that shit it's just like i'm allowed to be in it and i'm like i'm just working through this and like i love you i can't wait to see you and then it's like it just like allows the space to breathe and it doesn't like become a thing mm -hmm. yeah so it's not even always that something gets fixed or happened it's just like the willingness to like show up 
in your shit and like the willingness to like like okay i can love you through that shit like and because it's like the awareness i don't know it's a it's a new yeah. i can feel in you guys like what i feel with my person and that's why it's so exciting and so yeah. inspiring because like yeah love portal yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know i just went off on a rant but it's good no. it's yeah it's like you gotta re recalibrate mm -hmm. with your partner and like yeah it's it's truly is it's truly a recalibration like, yeah. a dance like we don't we don't behave or act the same way i i say how do i say that like to witness our growth since we've met mm -hmm. it, yeah. it's cool to like just sit and talk about it like how much I, how much she's helped me grow as a person and then she's like you've helped me grow and like it's just I don't know, like if I were to talk about the ways that Shelby has helped me grow, um, she, <laughs> Shelby's helped me be more expressive. Um, I dance a lot more. <laughs> I, I, I dance and I sing around the house like all the time. Mm -hmm. Like that's not something a lot of people know. I think mm -hmm. it's like I, I sing Shelby songs. <laughs> I, and I'm not, like, I don't, like I'm not, I don't I feel like my voice is fucking terrible uh but it doesn't, it doesn't matter when it's just me and shelby like i was sing to her um mm. i feel like i've been i feel like i've become more gentle um and it's okay to be gentle yeah and i, I think for a while i fought that like i'm a guy with a beard i have to look like i'm rich <laughs> you know i can fix everything and i'm a trucker and whatever else I don't trucker know. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know i don't i i don't know where the trucker thing came from but i feel like there's like this persona i was trying to take on of like being a tough guy yeah and i was like no being gentle is tough yeah and like allow that to just happen um and then on the flip side of that i've created way more boundaries with people i've i've learned to say no like all of these healthy masculine things that obviously we have masculine feminine inside of us yeah. but i've tapped into that masculinity because he gave me permission to in the right. first place and encourages me, hey, like, how are you feeling? Like, you don't have to say yes to everything. Why are you doing this? Why do you use your thing. voice more? Yeah. 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 But that's also <laughs> very feminine. Like, how are you feeling? Yeah. And, like, masculine feminine dynamics are really important mm -hmm. in relationships. Like, not even, like, masculine, like, I build stuff and feminine, I cook. But, like, right. just, like, the energy of it. Like, you know, I've heard it described as like the man provides like the space and the container and then the woman makes it like the home. And it's just like the energy of like feeling safe to be held and feminine and like, you know, and because he makes you that feel that then you can like, how are you feeling? Like, I don't, I don't feel like you can say no to other people, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, Hey, you need to say what you want. Mm hmm. Yeah. If you want that, you need to say it. Yeah. But it's beautiful because you both also, like, it is a dance. Like, everyone's both masculine and feminine. So, like, to hear you, how you've softened because of the feminine energy she's brought and mm -hmm. how you've become more, like, ordered or disciplined or structured or masculine because mm -hmm. of the energy he's brought. And, like, I, I love it. I love who I am now versus who I, like, I love that version of myself. But, like, it, it feels nice to have a balance created like to not be and to be for it to feel safe to like look at my toenails they're painted oh dude <laughs> jake paints his toenails too are yours painted yeah oh well, well, i was like yeah. mine are we so, went we I mean, went we and got pedicures we together got a, a pedicure and i was like shelby wasn't there at first and the lady was like do you want a color and i was like yeah i want to get a color <laughs> would you pick black this is the first time it's like Blue. an emerald color oh it's blue. luxurious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't have. You know, I wanted emerald green. They didn't have it. So it's blue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. It's so, funny. It's, so it's so interesting. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been. It's it's. I I love who I am now. I love who Shelby is. Like it's. I I love watching the growth. Like it's cool to like look back. Dude, you guys are like couple goals for sure. I feel like a lot of people are out there are like, damn, show me a rich though. Like, <laughs> oh, how do they do goodness. it? What's the secret sauce? What's the... But it is, I think, yeah, patience. 
fills them. Yeah. I, I think I think also having a feeling of freedom in your relationship is important. Yeah. So there's a lot of times like like I had never felt free in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I I would say want to go like, hey, I'm gonna go play this sport with this group of people or whatever. Like, is that okay? And she's like, I why are you asking like I want you I want you to have fun. I want you I to want you to have fun. friends. <laughs> <laughs> please, 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 please have friends. She kept saying, like, I want you to have friends, like go play. And I'm like, uh, okay. And then I'd play for like three hours and no guilt, no guilt trip, no like, why were you gone? What about me? Like yeah. none of it. It was tr like I truly feel free in our relation and and that just comes down to also free to be myself. Yeah. So I feel like if you are in a relationship and you don't feel free, like that might be like a check your heart like what's happening right now um yeah as like a warning maybe a warning sign if you're not feeling free right yeah and how it because then we feel free too like when you're free i feel free because like i don't want to be attached to what you're doing mm -hmm. like and i want to feel free to go do whatever i want to uh, do <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, it's also, it comes from, like, this security. It's almost like I feel so secure. Like, I just know this person's heart. Like, they're not going to do anything to hurt me. Like, yeah. he's not going to hurt me. So, like, yeah. I have no reason to, mm -hmm. like, feel any type of way about it. You know what I mean? Because you can mm -hmm. just, it's like that energy. And it, I don't know, I feel like there's, it's stupid. But, like, when you know, you know. Like, the energy is different when you meet someone who, like, yeah. truly can mirror you in a way that, yeah, I think my my wish is that that becomes more of a common um, experience for people. Yeah, that they meet somebody that they say, "Oh, I like, like, I can do this. Like, we can do this together. We can grow together." Yeah. Um, I will say, I think there was this. There's actually a, a practice of I think it's in Tibet where remember that artist was telling us this this mm -hmm. artist in Sedonia actually did that painting there his name's oh, uh that's amazing nick something anyways he he was saying he was he's married and he was talking about there's a ritual i think it's a tibetan ritual where you go as a couple before this monk or this priest and they don't call him either one of those things but somebody that's really dialed in and that would perform the ceremony and they say whether or not like you're meant to be together like there's so much trust placed in that one person oh, damn. like they will deny people if they don't think that they're meant to be together yeah yeah we don't deny people but we, i will tell you you can definitely tell yeah and you, we, we you can tell choose. in the space of the ceremony yeah where but again it's to me it's still not wrong right right to me it's like this isn't a forever thing but you're like you guys are gonna learn a lot. Yeah. Um, and I I'm honored to still be here to witness you in your current state. Yeah. But like I'm sending you on your way to like you you're going into the next chapter. Yeah. We have talked about that specifically because we're like, do we want to marry people when we know that they're not gonna be together forever? And we talked about it and we're like, well, the next step in their learning evolution is to be together. And so yeah. they're gonna learn some really valuable lessons yeah. and that would be like denying rich's first marriage where he learned who like i'm so thankful that we didn't have to go through that because <laughs> i can actually enjoy you as a person yeah. and i i don't know i think that's was... dude yes <laughs> yes no i feel that and like that's so true that's what i was gonna say too i was like but then you would like I feel like you guys just be like, well, hope you, hope you think of me for your second one. Because <laughs> the second one's where it's at. So, some some wedding vendors actually do both. I've heard stories like they did their first wedding and then like three years later they got married again. Yeah. And they did that wedding too. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's so crazy. I mean, it's like 50%. 50, it's like a 50 50. Like, yeah. But I do, I will say with our packages specifically, we. We do a video call with the couple. We um, we really get to know them, and so it's like we're having like it's like we're marrying our friends. Yeah. And I I will say that our elopement packages are pretty solid. <laughs> like all of the, most of the people who choose to elope or at least do a micro micro wedding you as start, opposed to larger weddings, they're very much. They're, you t you're, you would say level. your percentage of success rate is yeah higher. for sure. Yeah, and it's, man, we've really dialed in, like, even the process of working with other 
couples because it used to be like I would just we were not we were not like working together to onboard a couple to like right. hey can can we make this happen together like is this something we want to do it was all like I'm out to try I'm still in this mentality of like I gotta get out of the corporate because I didn't quit Chase until February like of this previous year so oh wow um Oh, but that's almost not a year anniversary. Almost not a year of me leaving corporate America. Yes, fuck Um, yeah. So, like, I was still in this mentality of like, oh, I'll take, I'll take whatever. Like, we don't have to talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. We still had beautiful. There were still beautiful ceremonies, Mm -hmm. but like now it's no. Like, I've got to the point where it's like I'm trusting the universe more, and by by trying to force it and control it less. Mm -hmm. So, like. We're going to have a call before anybody does anything. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk to each other over a video call or in person and say like, hey, one, we have, we start, we've started to like audibly affirm people for making this decision because it's a decision made in authenticity. Mm-hmm. Nobody comes to us and they're like, hey, we, we want to elope because we're afraid and uh, <laughs> we're afraid of our parents. We're afraid of all these things. So we're, we're doing this in fear. No, an elopement, to, for somebody to say like, it's just going to be the two of us. Or it's just going to be like 20 of us. Mm-hmm. That's a courageous decision because it's made in authenticity. Mm-hmm. And so we've, we've like, mm-hmm. that was another like medicine, like journey of like, hey, affirm people mm-hmm. for reaching this point. And the couple we talked with today, we, we told them like, hey, we just congratulate you guys for like reaching this decision. Because we know that to get here, you've had to tell parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, people that are like, what are you doing? You're doing it wrong. Like you should have, a, you should, 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 all of these mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. You've quieted it and you've said, no, like what I want is more important. And, and it's so stops. validating to the couple because they do have to deal with all that stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So from the jump, <laughs> I've only been in this for like since September before I like went to wedding. I'm like, <laughs> but like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so, I, I don't know, just like, Witnessing them, telling them like, "Hey, I see you. Yeah. I see that this decision is not like, yeah, yeah, it costs something, but it has costed you something to even come to this decision. Yeah, and it's really cool. So like, like nice to meet you. Like yeah. let's 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 chat. So, um, you know, we'll ask why why they chose to elope. Um, why they choose? Why are they choosing a micro wedding versus just an elopement? Because mm-hmm. that can also play into the fact of like, are you inviting your parents because you, you want, want them, them there or, or they, because they're forcing themselves to be there or because they're paying for it. So you feel like you have you're to guilty. Yeah. So they guilt yeah. tripped you into inviting yeah. them. So there's just a lot of little questions that we ask up front to kind of paint the picture yeah. of what are we walking into? What can we, what do we want to say yes to? What do we want to say no to? So people basically <laughs> end up getting like a crash course and like, <laughs> <laughs> sovereignty and like <laughs> self empowerment and like <laughs> when yeah. work with yes, you too. that's that's honestly like I thought we were just getting I thought we were gonna create a business that allowed us to be free to have a family to have our own hours and really it was like we are giving people permission to use their voice and use their freedom <laughs> and get what they want and that has been really cool to see our business develop in that way because it's really an empowering process. Dude, it's so aligned. <laughs> like honestly, it's so it's so beautiful. Like this is this is like <laughs> hands down my favorite episode I've ever recorded. Like this I just feel so inspired and like it's it's just really beautiful because it's like it just shows people what's possible. Like and it's empower. I, I just love every aspect. Like it's empowering for these people. Like you were saying to go elope like that, and then you guys did it, and you're just affirming all of this beautiful like truth and authenticity, and like it shows in your life. And I don't know, it's just fucking cool, man. Like <laughs> it's really inspiring to hear you guys talk. I'm really enjoying this. Oh man, I feel so honored. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I feel so honored. You guys are really like doing the work and what the work you're doing is beautiful like if you guys don't follow them on instagram on there like you have to go check it out because like you're 
like, and I'm loving too, you're, you're kind of starting to offer like a little bit of relationship advice in some of your reels and like, mm -hmm. and just like let little, maybe not even advice, but just like little glimmers into like your relationship or process in addition to like beautiful wedding <laughs> photos and like, you know, it's just so uplifting. But. I think that's a very important thing that we do want to focus on this year is because we do couples coaching together. And we've noticed some little themes of like, what are people actually coming to the table? Like, what do they want to focus on? What do they need help with? And a lot of it is communication and just simply validating, validating people's feelings, like validate each other's feelings and that's it. Yeah. And yeah. so we have been trying to focus more on how, what does a healthy relationship look like? Because a lot of people, myself included, has, did not grow up witnessing healthy relationships. Yes. And it's like, okay, well, we're figuring this out together <laughs> because neither of us grew up yeah. with healthy families. And so it's navigating how can we challenge people just enough to spark some conversation within their own relationship. Not and not nose dive them into something that they're not ready for. Right. <laughs> but like how do we take little steps to cultivate yeah. a more intentional relationship yeah we've been working on trying to develop that more um you know it's interesting the couples coaching aspect is it's it's encouraged from a religious institutional standpoint like because if you go out and you try to find secular if you if you just search premarital coaching books on amazon you're gonna, like all they're all going to be Christian based books because when we were like, well, what do we use to like help, help a couple? Like, like if we're going to use, if we don't create it ourselves, which I feel like at some point we're going to be called to create our own. Yeah. Just because there isn't, we've like pieced together certain things. I'd like to incorporate like human design mm -hmm. into couples coaching. Cause I, I feel like that's been so impactful for our relationship. It's like, I can only teach you what I know. I can't teach right. you what I don't. <laughs> and we've had people say like your relationship is different like you we, we've heard that and it's like well how do we take what we've learned and help other people <laughs> from a space that's like practical because if you're when and you authentic. said like and authentic like if you said well hey what's your secret to doing this i'm like i have to think about it like it's yeah. i don't have like these like little tips off the top of my head so it's how do we turn it into a way that we can help others and it but, be digestible and it, and it be digestible or, or replicable. Like we not, we don't want everybody to have our relationship. We just want, we want there to be more joy and more freedom and more love. And if you can cultivate, if we can help other people cultivate that as they step into this new chapter of like, how do you want to step into marriage? Do you want to step into it as like the old ball and chain? Or do you want to step into it as like, I got some brand new fucking wings. I'm ready to fly. Like, <laughs> like let, like let's jump, like yeah. let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I think we're, we're still like dialing that piece in. The other piece I did, we didn't mention is we also just opened a floral company mm. called Let's Bloom. And that started because we we saw this beautiful person, her name's Danny. And Danny was doing flowers like part time. And we, we she did this wedding for us. She did a couple weddings for us and then she did a bigger wedding for us. And I was like, man, this like, so works incredible. Yeah. And so I, I was like, we try to do like team dinners after like after a wedding, like yeah. everybody else is eating like, Hey, let's go grab food like together and celebrate. Like we just created something really cool. Yeah. And so we, we went to dinner with Danny and he, he heard her story and heard like not, she's not, doesn't feel supported by her family to like have her own business. Like, so she's going to dental assistance. School. Like, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like <laughs> <laughs> we, we get in the car to drive home. And we're driving, we're driving home and I was like, whoa, I, well, we both thought rewind that. like six months before that. I was like, man, I wish we had our own, like, I wish we could have our own florist. Like that was something yeah. that we said six months later, we're at dinner with Danny and the light bulb was like, Hey, remember what you asked for? And we get in the car and I was like, yo, there, she could do this full time. Like, why is it like, we have to, we have to help. Like we have to figure out a way to like join forces and like bring what we can bring to the table and bring her like art with flowers, bring that out into, into the world more. And so, and help her do what she wants to do. Like yeah. she, she loves it. And we love, we love Danny so much. Mm -hmm. Um, so we created let's bloom 
Danny is the, the florist and the creator and the designer behind all of it. And, and what's really cool about about that aspect is I know you have the flower essence. Yeah. Um, she specifically works with flowers and their energy Ooh. and like, hey, what do you want to feel on your wedding day and what flowers will support Ooh, that feeling? That's beautiful. And how can I put this vibration of whatever you're wanting um, into into your space by, mm. by adding these little flower touches? That's so. Beautiful. Dude, this is just further evidence. Like back to the like couples coaching or whatever you want to call it. Like it's just so obvious. Like you guys are already starting to like do little inklings of that. Like, and I think the best way is like people just want to see relationships that are happy and like just hear like you know. Well, I don't know the answers, but like this is what we do. You know what I mean? And like just starting there, like it's really beautiful. That's why I'm so excited to like shine light on this because it is. Just seeing it, like, I'm like, and you can just tell by what you guys are already doing, like, you're just helping people believe in it, and like you said, like, we want, I, I too want more people to feel like love is possible, like, you always hear, like, you know, relationships are so hard, and like, love doesn't last, and, blah, 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 blah. and it's like, I still have a hopeless romantic in me that wants to believe that I can find someone who's down to fucking ride this life through me, and that we can do it in love, and like... Yeah. Like, you can heal on a bed of roses. It doesn't have to be, like, so fucking tumultuous and painful. And, like, yeah. And same with, like, work and stuff. That's why it's just so beautiful. It's all, like, coming together. Danny came in, answered your prayers. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been it's been cool to, like, see that process, like, unfold. And There's been a weaving of the universe like weaving all of these things in for us so it does feel like this whole company kind of happened for us and like we didn't we obviously were we're doing what we needed You're to do yeah but it was just like how i could we could not have done this on our own yeah. <laughs> there was just like so much weaving so happening. much conspiring yeah mm -hmm. conspiring. <laughs> yeah and having reverence to that to that higher power like that has, you know, <laughs> moved in your life to create mm -hmm. these things to happen. And like, but it is also a reflection of you and the work that you guys mm -hmm. are doing. And I'm just so inspired. I, I appreciate you saying this stuff about our relationship. Cause I, I personally, I don't know how you feel about it, but I personally feel like our do is what we have. Like that is what we have rare. Like, I don't, I don't know that it is, or I feel guilty being like, Hey, like we do have a good relationship. We should tell other people about like, there's this weird, like, is it okay to, like, step into that? Yeah. Like, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Does that when make sense? When you say that, when you when you just said that, your body shrugged your shoulders like you were shrinking. Yeah. So it tells me I, that, I, that you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, and, like, I think that it's, it's challenging. Like, not from a braggy way. Exactly, because you and see a lot of people doing it, it's fucking annoying. And so yeah. you don't want to be that. And, yeah. like. I, I was just talking to my friend about this too because I also am in a place where I'm like I want to like share some of this stuff I'm learning and like the love I'm feeling but I don't want to be like come across like I have the answers or mm -hmm. like right like you know because but it's like and she was like people just want to see real love and like see it exist so like however you express that you know mm -hmm. like sometimes it might be in like an informative type video or like but sometimes it's in just like the silly reels and like the one where you're just like the like Kim Kardashian voice. Like I showed that shit to my mom. Like, Is that what that was from? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm like, Shirley, give me your robe. Like, give me those glasses. And then, it's me, funny. Like... And like people just want to see it. So like just you guys are authentic. Like you've already, you've got this dude. Like. It's coming. <laughs> that I, part I, of it is coming. I, I have a good time with the reels. <laughs> Sh Shelby sent me so many, like, all these audio clips. She's like, we got to do these. I was like, okay, like, can we just do them all? So, like, we'll just do a bunch of them at the same time. And it's, we just laugh. Shelby's laughing the entire time. <laughs> and she's like, you're so funny. I'm like, this is making me enjoy this a lot more. <laughs> 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 No, dude. I know. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what's your? When's your? What are your signs? Scorpio. Virgo. And Virgo. Oh. Okay. Okay. I I always see the Virgo stuff, and I'm like, I don't feel like that's me at it's all. It's absolutely you. <gasps> How? Oh. How okay. so? 
pull up a meme. It's pretty clear. We're going to have to pull up a meme. Yes. Wait, Virgo, Thank you. Wait, Virgo. Obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> like, your house no, is pretty this clean. <laughs> is, this is a... So our house, that's actually something that has caused us some, some pretty... Not intense fights, but like disagreements. Yeah. Uh, because plug, plug for a cleaner. Plug house for a cleaner. house cleaner because I am <laughs> so creative. I... My space is just like I don't. It doesn't register for me to even shut a cabinet door. Like, that, <laughs> like I'm not. It doesn't. You'll go I'm in the kitchen. Like five cabinet that doors are open. Like, oh, he's like, I, I don't get it. Yeah, he can't yeah. You can't I'm compute like, what I'm, I'm like. Shall we? There's been a bear in the kitchen. And I'm like, <laughs> do you want everything. my creativity to flow? Yeah. Then don't mess with me about yeah. my space because I see. I I've never heard that about a bird. I don't know where you guys are. You have not now. researched anything so about like, science. So Virgos <laughs> like to be clean. Yeah, they they like a clean space. Yeah, yeah. I I like I feel like it, it's it's uh creates like a safe space. Like it, I feel like I can sink in yeah. in a clean space versus like not overly clean. Like not you can't sit on my sofa. Like you're gonna <laughs> get. But like I want to comfortably sit. And if I have to set something down, I don't want to have to move like 10 things to set something. Yeah. I just like it to be clean. Yeah. And then what something I immediately like... did was put things everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So no relationship is all <laughs> butterflies and roses all the no. time. No. No. But shout out to uh, to Rachel. Um, she she does come and clean our house. She does. So that was one thing where we were we were getting into disagreements almost every week. And I was like, how much is it? To just hire a cleaner because when we're working, when you have your own business, instead of working nine to five, you literally work twenty four seven. Yeah. And so people also don't understand that. It, they do, there's no comp, comp like if you if aren't you a business it, yeah. owner, then you do not understand. Like, cause we even we didn't understand what we were getting ourselves into. Yeah. And you you can't really prep anyone is for you. it. You it's, are yeah. Your business. Yeah, it like flows through you. So like. We're like, how can we like not talk about work at the dinner table? Because it just happens. Yeah. Now we get in a, yeah. we're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? Yeah. Wouldn't it? And it just because like it's our excitement, like it's our passion. Yeah. It's just it's hard to keep. But it we quiet. have had to create boundaries, yeah. and we have had to be like, okay, we're not. We have to, we have to schedule in breaks on our calendar yeah. so that we're not working. Yeah. So that's good. But you know. I feel like you were going somewhere else. I don't know. I feel like. Uh, Rachel cleaning her house was, yeah. was into so a lot we have of this, fights. For we have us. this beautiful person named Rachel. She sings oh. everywhere. She we had to go through like four different people to find her. But she literally comes in, she's like a cleaning fairy and she sings and she's joyful and oh. I love her so much. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I love her too. Yeah. Shout out Rachel. Yeah. Shout out to Rachel. Um, <laughs> Well, I feel like we gave the people a lot of... How long have we been talking? A long time, dude. I don't even know. I can't read that. Can you read it? Mm -hmm. At least an hour, I think. But it was worth it. Like, this was great. I <laughs> got so of, much out of this kind of conversation. flew by. I yeah. know. But I still want to do... Um, I still want you guys to read your cards and maybe pull, like, one... We don't have to pull one card, but if you, you feel inspired... pull a card together. Yeah. yeah. Just to wrap it up and... I mean, we already got two, which are... Let me this one. Okay, do it. Love endures. Oh. <laughs> Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. Ooh. And the cards you got before were? Mine was the union of hearts. A love connection defies explanation. Mm. It's true, two trees. Mm. Mine was honesty is essential. Mm. Speak with love and truth. Mm. These are all pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. I feel like to me, like what I would take away from this is like, wait, like, you know, you'll know when you're, you found someone who's like the person you've been praying for because it will just feel different. And like, mm -hmm. so don't ignore those little voices in your head when you meet someone and it's a no, like, don't force it. Just like, wait, because someone who's like better than your wildest dreams is going to come in. And then, like, once you're in that, just being honest and showing up in the truth of who you are and being vulnerable, all of those things we talked about. Um, and then love endures. Like, 
you can believe in love lasting like love portals can last love portals don't have to end hmm. shout know. out to constant love portals <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't want to be in the love portal uh, i don't know you gotta be outside your mind <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you guys think? Do you feel, do you have anything else to say to the people? I feel like I'm here for it to do. I would, you, you said something about the knowing. And I think that that's like not ignoring the no and not ignoring like what feels aligned. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just want to echo that. Yeah. Just be patient. Be patient. Don't ignore, don't ignore like red flags. Yeah out of the desire to like want to be held and loved and like as hard as it is to ignore that like don't well yeah. there was actually a moment right before i met rich where i went on a date with this guy who was old like older like i was 26 25 at the time uh -huh. and he was like in his 30s which was a big step for me yeah. but there was a moment where i was like hey you know what maybe i do want to be taken care of versus like finding an immature person yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because when you're in your 20s you're like i don't know what i'm doing yeah and then after i went out with on one date with that guy i was like you know what i want someone who i can build an empire with i want someone who i can build a life with mm -hmm. and that was like a really deciding factor moving forward of like figuring out what you actually want so that you can be receptive of yeah. of it when it comes yeah, yeah. like be, be intentional about it yeah, get clear on what you want. That's what I did. Like, I mean, I made a whole ass list, which like, mm -hmm. to me just helped me visualize. But like, you got to be careful with that because you don't want to get too hung up on like, you know, yeah. but if you pick like, especially like three to five, like solid things that you know, like you value in a person or and like mm -hmm. envision like kind of what it looks like and then just let it go and like, then when someone comes in, you get to gauge it against that because you're clear mm -hmm. on what you want. Yeah. yeah, be clear on what you want and don't ignore, don't ignore your own intuition. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. deny it. Yeah. Everybody has it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find something that's so worth the wait. <laughs> what are you thinking? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys too. This was amazing. Thank you so much for Thank coming, you. for being, well, I guess letting me come over, but just being <laughs> honest and open and like, I'm just really excited to share this episode. It was great. Yay. Yay. Love you guys. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again so much to Shelby and Rich for this conversation. And thank you to all of you listening for taking the time to tune into this episode. I hope that you got something out of it and feel inspired, feel full of love, and can carry that with you through the rest of this week. I wanted to also say thank you for all of your support on Instagram, for tuning in to Feelings Friday. I go live every Friday to talk about my feelings in an effort to share and show that it's okay to be human and have emotions and process through them and not have it all figured out. So thank you for your support. I also have a website. It's recalibrate.com where I sell some pretty awesome fucking t-shirts. I've got stickers on there and your support means the world to me. It is how I make most of my money. So thank you for continuously supporting me. I will have updates and things on the way. I just am in the process of learning how to operate things like Adobe and, um, you know, just doing a lot of work on myself at, in this journey to feel worthy of my dreams. And, um, yeah, I'm just doing the best I can, you know? So thank you for being a part of my journey. Thank you for witnessing in my, me in my process. Thank you for being here. Thank you for commenting on these videos. Thank you for sending me feedback about how it impacted you. Thank you for sharing it with your friends. Thank you for all of your support. Like it truly keeps me going and I get the most beautiful messages. And when I hear that, it makes me feel like I'm making a difference and it makes me feel connected to all of you. And that's really what we're all seeking is connection and to know that we're not alone and to know that we're in this human experience, this crazy fucking world together. So all of that means so much to me. And I just want to thank you for your continued support. And like I said, I hope that this 
shines or strengthens the light within you and that you can carry that with you through the rest of this week and the rest of your days. I love you. Funk past J's and face the blunt ass trace and skate with punk kids. I still chase the sun bad days. I'm lacing up half cabs and shake junk spliffs. Whatever happened to rap is your rest in peace to Mac and I'm here to raise it from the dead. Cause drugs ain't cool, kid. Plug you with that new shit. Turn water to wine and break bread. And if I said this all the future, would you trust I told the truth or would you run away and tell my whole fan base? Cause sooner or later, kid, they'll take your human nature and they'll burn you at the stakes while the band plays. So, in the last words, better speak up now. I said, why do birds sing? What's the king without a crown? They all stood in silence while they listened to the sound of a madman reason with the demons he found. You can't lock up ideas, we don't even exist. I just live through the speakers and the beats that we kick. Is this forbidden fruit from the garden? Of Eden, is it freedom of speech or am I speaking for freedom?